Alright, troops, here we go. We're in for some uh, Kerbal Space Program. What we're going to do today is we're going to get ourselves to uh, dock. We're going to learn how to dock here. Um, docking is actually ridiculously easy once you get the hang of it. Um, I mean, do it efficiently, not so well, or not so easy, but we're not looking for the total efficiency on this mission. We're just going to get the basic um, idea of how to uh, rendezvous and then how to dock. That's basically the the process of what we're going to go through here. We need to obviously get into orbit first. Um, we're going to use the Mark III, um, what's it called here, command pod thingy. Uh, we're going to use that, um, and we're obviously got to make sure we got some. Was it uh, the? Uh, we're going to make sure we got the the thermal protection, the heat shield is what we need at the bottom of the uh, spacecraft, otherwise we shall burn up on re-entry. So we need to make sure that we've done that, uh, obviously adding the um, coupler thingy to stage ourselves away from the main rocket, um, as well as batteries, because I can't say how many times I forget to add batteries and uh, yeah, you burn up, oh no sorry, you don't burn up, you run out of, you run out of juice um, in the dark side of the, uh, of the of the planet. What we're trying to do here is figure out which size um, rockets, parts and all the fuel tanks we need because I keep forgetting which ones are the right size. So uh, for some reason the one for this particular size is at the bottom and I'm not too sure why and I get confused and there we go we finally find it. Um, we're gonna put ourselves two fuel tanks like so, add ourselves a poodle engine because I just like the look of it and it fits nicely onto this size fuel tank and then we shall move on to building the actual uh, main booster that we have here. Uh, we shall be figuring out where we put our RCS thrusters because we're going to need them to dock. That is very important, we can't miss out on that. Also you're going to need a fuel tank otherwise you, uh, I mean a RCS fuel tank otherwise you'll forget um, and you will only have 30 uh, units of RCS fuel to make yourselves dock to the station. I mean, it is possible to do it with that, and I have done it before, but it's not ideal. You want plenty. We've called the spacecraft Docky Boy because what we are going to be doing today is docking to our, our space station that we have up in orbit and the space station was previously built on our Twitch stream and if I haven't told you already make sure you come along to the Twitch channel twitch.tv uh, forward slash Lita Giraffe. You need to make sure you come along to there every Friday apart from Saturdays um, as we stream um, on every other day but that. So make sure you do come along and uh, say hello. Yes, so obviously we need, now need some uh, fins to make sure that we can control the craft as we go up into the uh, the orbit through the atmosphere. So we need to make sure we got fins, otherwise the gimbal may not be enough. We need to add also our... Um, what they called, you know what they called, the uh, solar panels. We need to make sure we have them, otherwise we will not get any more juice and we may run out. Um, you do get electric charge from the throttle of the engine though, um, for some reason. Um, I'm not sure if that's a real thing or not. Somebody has to tell me in the uh, in the comments section below. Make sure you do tell me. So obviously we've got the space station circling around, the stop and go, or the stop and fly, I believe. Uh, we're going to make sure that it is where our mouse is pointed before we before we launch, as this is one heavy boy, and we need to make sure that it is uh, behind us, because otherwise it will overtake us, is the issue. Um, so there we go, launching up into the atmosphere in a nice sunset as well. How lovely. So we're just going to fast forward this piece here, so we get up to about 100,000 metres, because that is where the space station is orbiting. It's a nice round number, I thought I'd put it there. The actual launch profile is fairly simple itself. You want to go to about 3,000 metres with this size aircraft, over 4,000 metres actually. Then start your turn up to the 45 degree angle. You don't want to be turning too quick, otherwise you'll be putting too much stress on the aircraft from aerodynamic forces and you may flip out or something silly like that. Um, so yeah, make your way across to 45 degrees slowly and then you'll be up at 100,000 meters and we shall begin from there. Right, as you can see, we are now up in the outer atmosphere. I mean, we are now in space or something or other. And you can see that our second closer approach, or now our first closest approach, is 
fairly close to the station. We're going to burn roughly about now because we know our thrust to weight ratio is fairly low, so we accelerate fairly slowly. We just staged our booster stage, and here we go with the poodle engines. They're not very strong, so we do need to make sure that we're burning quite far ahead of where the space station is, so that that way he will catch up to us and we can rendezvous with it in due time. As we can see, the stop and fly is catching up. It's probably going about double the speed we're going now. In fact, we, we were going about a thousand when we started this burn, and it was going two thousand. So yes, we, we were double the speed. I mean, they were double the speed of us. So we do need to take time to speed up. We're going to put ourselves onto the retrograde marker. Make sure we've switched over to target. That way, we can see the retrograde burn to the target. So we want to cancel out our velocity in comparison to the target that we're going to and in order to do that we need to point towards retrograde it does kind of look like we're just going for a circular orbit which is basically what we're doing we're trying to make sure that we're going at exact same speed as the target so that way we're not moving in comparison to it and at that point we will then burn towards the target and we should get a decent um, approach or a decent a uh, a decent like encounter with the uh, station and as you can see we're already down to 200 and 20 meters per second or so and we are going to be approaching the target very shortly so Tachi overtaking us we should have burnt a little bit quicker but I wanted to show you the actual separation of the rocket because it looks really cool and nobody wants to miss that so as you can see the camera rotates when you get into like an, an orbit so that's a good way of kind of telling whereabouts you're in orbit but I think when you are uh, when it does that you're not actually out of the atmosphere at that point so you still need to burn a little bit more so you can see we've orientated ourselves so that we're pointed towards the target and we're going to burn towards it that way um, we shall get the closer uh, we shall get closer to it as you can see we're only separated by just over 100 meters once we approach the target itself so we're going to time warp forwards um, but me being me i time warp a little bit too much and we go straight past it which is not great uh we did not want that but it's okay we will uh, work our way around it uh slow down and we're just going to cancel out our velocity now um when you're going slow enough it won't let you target retrograde marker for some reason um so you can't completely cancel it out uh doing that so you have to orientate yourself manually and then i overshoot as you can see so we've got to turn around again and do it again um this is just so that i can um get it on the bright side of the planet so that you guys can see it um, so I'm just going to time warp again uh, but the process here would be just point towards the tar target a little bit burn and then you'll go towards it like we have just by accident um, and then you would then cancel out your velocity to get to this point here now the important thing to do at this point here is you need to make sure that you auto save um, I do forget this quite a bit on stream and uh, a lot of you will know that um, and I will come and regret that decision. So we auto save here and it's a good job we did because we do end up needing that um, as you'll see from the cut in the video very shortly. I did mess up uh, part of this process and here we go we're back in. Um, so we did use that auto save. It's very important to auto save when you can um, so that you don't mess up. Uh, well and if you do mess up you can come back to the save itself. Right what we're going to do now is we're going to, after we've taken a couple of cinematic shots, we're going to make sure we align ourselves with the docking port of the space station. We're going to use the one of the fuel tank that's on there. Um, I just chose it at random, I could have used any of them, uh, but it was the closest one to us at the time. Um, we're going to use that one to stock with, and the Jebediah of the crew, the captain of the crew, will be uh, inspecting the space station as he docks to make sure that everything is serviceable before he returns to Kerbin. What we need to do obviously is burn away so that we've got plenty of tight time to maneuver and do what we need to do. Um, I burn too much then, which is a bit of a drama, but it's not too much. We can fast forward a little bit, as you'll see we will do. We need to make sure that our center of mass is aligned with the docking bot because the craft maneuvers around it, around its center of mass. Uh, so we need to make sure that it's aligned that way, which we are kind of doing here. We're now making fine adjustments with our RCS, and that way we can 
get it spot on so we're not moving too far. We're going to test all the buttons with I, J, K and L. Uh, that's controlling your left, right, up and down. Then your H and N is your front and back keys. That's important to remember. Also, we need to make sure that we press caps lock to enable the fine controls so we're not just shooting ourselves around in random directions uh, without control, without that fine control that's needed. So what I'm going to do now as well, you'll notice, is I'll roll uh, so that I'm in line with the, with the controls so that my J will move me left and my L will move me right. That way it's just a bit more easier to control um, if I needed to make any small adjustments or something like that. So you can see we'll burn towards the actual station itself now, uh, making sure that the, the prograde marker is inside our target marker. That way we know that we're moving directly towards the target. We want to make sure that when we actually dock with the target, that we are actually on a speed of less than about 5.5 meters per second. Any faster than that, I feel like you just jolt the space, the station around, and you risk the Kraken approaching and attacking the station and the craft itself. And yes, you really don't want that, or you don't want any damage to your craft itself. So we slow down just now as we get closer. We want to make sure that now that we are aligned with the spacecraft, uh, with the station itself. So we're just going to make those small adjustments that we're in line. And also as we push towards the last little maneuver, we want to turn off RCS and SAS. I think it was a bug in one of the previous games where if you kept it on, the station would just tear itself to pieces. And that was a right drama. So we, as you can see, we have docked, docked successfully. And upon docking, you want to make sure you time warp a little bit. That gets rid of all your, any sort of movements. The station is completely still. So Jebediah is now out of the spacecraft and he's inspecting the station as his mission told him to. You can see the Soyuz types rocket on top that houses the crew that are currently within the station and they are doing lovely and fine. The Bob and Bill are having a, having a wonderful conversation with them now, sharing the tea and biscuits as they do. And now Jeb has completed his inspection and will get back into his spacecraft where he will make his way back down to Kerbin to get a report written up and send it up the chain of command. So there we go, we undock and doing so we want to make sure that the spacecraft is now on orbit instead of target because that could be quite um, quite bad if you forget to do that and so you could end up launching yourself back into the station and once we've made sure that we're on orbit we want to hit retrograde pointing towards the like opposite direction that we're moving in the orbit that way we slow ourselves down doing so we will deorbit ourselves and we'll come back in through the atmosphere so as we come down we want to make sure that we're over our landing spot i didn't really pick a spot i just wanted to lose a lot of velocity i guess and now now we've done so we're just going to stage and separate our our spacecraft so that we are exposing our heat shield for re-entry. We want to make sure that we are definitely pointing retrograde when we enter because if we don't then our heat shield will be useless and it will not be able to do anything against the heat effects of re-entering. The plasma will build up and destroy the crew inside which is not what we want. So here we go, we get a lovely shot of the spacecraft coming down that I shall fast forward because it's basically the same thing all the way through and until we get the parachutes out. So we want to make sure that once we have entered the atmosphere that our chutes definitely do deploy because if they don't deploy then we've got dramas and we need to make sure that we right click on them and deploy them manually if it's not set up in your staging properly because otherwise you'll crash straight into the ground and nothing will be there to protect your gobbles. So we want to make sure that we click on the button, water button to change it to land button because then it tells you your altitude by, uh, by the radar and that you want to make sure that you slow down to time warp one so that you're not time warping at all because if you do the chutes might not deploy properly and I've had this issue a couple of times where you go crashing into the into the Kerbin surface and it's not a good time for anyone the Kerbals are upset everyone's crying it's not great fun so we zoom out and we can see that we clip through the through the floor buggy camera things with Kerbal it's not great but there we go we've successfully landed um, 
Jebediah inspected the space station. All was well. Everyone is enjoying it. And they returned to the surface. So I hope you learned a lot from this video on how to actually uh, rendezvous with a target and you can dissect this video as in how you like to make sure that you know what you're doing when it comes down to the docking with a spacecraft. So just keep watching this video as much as you need to practice this. I'd suggest you practice it a million times just to make sure that you've got this down and you know exactly what you're doing. But Thank you very much for watching this video and uh, be sure to come across to Twitch, twitch.tv slash Leodraff. Make sure you also have a look at our uh, Twitter and our Instagram to make sure I'll have them up on screen now so you can see them and like and follow or whatever you do on those, on those platforms. But please do come along, uh, follow along and you'll be able to see what I get up to and when videos are going up and also when our live streams are occurring. So please do come along and then we can get ourselves a lovely uh, following on the Twitch and get affiliated and that's what we want at the end of the day. Make sure you like and subscribe the video below. Also comment what you'd like to see next on Kelvin Space Program or any of the games that you want to see and we shall do our best to see them. And other than that, we shall be saying goodbye and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching.